All right, guys, Bob from Bob's Farm Workshop here again. Today, we're back in my kitchen, and we're going to make my family's holiday favorite, Grandma's Classic 321 Peanut Butter Fudge. And the 321 is the recipe. Three heaping tablespoons of cocoa powder. Two cups of sugar, one cup of milk. When we get done cooking it and it turns to candy, we will be adding some peanut butter and some butter. You could add nuts, I suppose. And we're gonna pour it into a pie plate that's been, the old recipe calls for butter, I'm gonna hit it with Pam. Okay, so, to start right out, you get your good old-fashioned Hershey's chocolate here, and it's three of these heaping teaspoon tablespoons, just like that. Two cups of sugar. Now the recipe calls for oops, calls for kind of melding this stuff together a little bit first, and. That's the recipe that my uncle used to always do when I was a kid. Kind of get the lumps in the cocoa. You know, it's a little lumpy. Get the lumps in the cocoa. But you know what? You're going to get a liquid. You're going to heat this up and it's going to boil. And it's going to boil quite a while. It's going to take about 20 minutes of boiling or so. So now I'm going to just measure my cup of milk. And you probably could use almond milk if you wanted to skip some of the fat. This is uh, skim milk. And I don't think it makes any difference. Because the candy effect is when that sugar gets to a certain temperature. You don't have to be fussy about this. They, uh, sugar in this mix it gets to a certain temperature and it will get glassy that's how they make sugar glass they boil sugar so you can see this just kind of looks like mud smells good though Alright, so I've got that down so the bottom is not dry. I got the liquid down to the bottom of the pot so that I can, here let me aim you down here. I can turn my burner around now. I'm using what's called a power burner. And what this is going to do, now this is going to take a lot of time to start heating and dissolving everything together. And I'll show you when it happens. This will start to bubble and froth and it'll expand and it'll rise up and rise up and start bubbling a lot. And you watch that and you keep stirring it once in a while, every few seconds, so that she doesn't stick and burn. And you'll see it starting to sink back down when it starts getting to the point where you want to. And what you do then is you take your cup, ugh, uh, cold water in it. And you drizzle a little bit of that cocoa or that mixture in there. And you'll see it when it hits the water if it turns solid and almost comes to a, a like a worm in the bottom and you can kind of ball it up against the side. You know it's getting there now. I like my fudge more hard so I cook it until it's well candied and that's how I like it but you can cook it a little bit less and it'll be more creamy and more uh, well, not marshmallow but it'll be mushy it'll never get hard and I don't really like it mushy all right so I'm pretty much gonna turn you guys off until this starts to boil and rise up here for us. All right, time will tell. I've decided this batch, as long as we're doing an experiment, to try uh, 
some crushed nuts in there. So my wife has this fancy nut grinder. I can put some pecan halves in there. And there's just little blades that go around there. And I'm not going to put a great deal of these. But my little nut grinder. Alright. I'll throw them in when we get to the end. Alright. I always got to try something a little different, don't we? It's not the same old, same old. But as I said, this is real fudge. This isn't the fake stuff. You don't make this out of marshmallows and a candy bar. Alright, as you can see, don't you hate it when everybody says, as you can see. But you can see, <laughs> this stuff is starting to expand and boil here. It's probably only been about five or ten minutes since we started this batch that you've been shut down. But keep her stirred up so she don't stick and burn. And just keep an eye on that. We're going to get to a point where it's going to take about 15 minutes of concentration here. Where we're going to be concentrating on what we're doing with this. All right. We'll come back. I'll see what I told you. Make sure you get a big enough pot because you can see how much that is boiling and expanding up here. And this is the pot I always use so I know it won't come over. Of course when you stir it you let a little bit of the air bubbly stuff out. I'm going to turn that heat back just a Scorch this. We were in Belgium in June when I went to to see the D-Day beaches and and, and uh, Bastogne in Germany this past June. And they're supposed to be famous for their chocolate and I assume fudge, but. I thought it tasted pretty much the same as what we make and have over here. You know, I wouldn't go to Belgium just to get chocolate. So she's really got a rolling boil now, and that's what you want to do. So as I said, I'm going to watch this for a while. It'll start to sink down, and you'll notice it's getting kind of glass, thicker and glassy looking. That's what you're going to. That's when you're going to start testing it. Now we're getting to that point where it's starting to change. It has stopped rising and boiling up so high it's actually starting to settle back down and as I said if you look it starts getting kind of a silvery look glossy that means we're we're getting closer I just tested it a little bit and it's nowhere near it still just tastes like chocolate syrup on your fingertip and see it's settling down a lot when I stir it um, if you touch your finger to a little bit of what's left on the spoon after you stir it, which give it a few seconds because it's going to be hotter than the hubs of hell, and touch it to your tongue quick, it should immediately get firm and tacky on your tongue. Right now, just a little bit of hardness, but not enough to say we're done yet, that's for sure. So we're going to watch this. We're going to watch it settle down a little more. It'll go almost all back to where the beginning size before it's actually done cooking. All right, we're getting there. Hang on. Okay, she's been cooking down for a while, and I know she's not ready yet. And I'm going to show you a sample when it's not ready. So I've got my spoon. I got a little bit of stuff in here. Drop it in. See it all just kind of fell apart. It's, yeah, well, it's starting to clump together just a little bit. But I like it a little firmer than that. Still, just um. But I'm eating it. Yeah, it was cold and it was still just soft, like thick syrup, so. Got a little bit of ways to go. That's, that's how you test it. It 
she's boiled down a lot now as you can see. And don't forget to stir it every minute or two. Now you got to work really fast when this tests how you want it, which it'll take a couple of experimental runs for you to get it how you like it. As soon as you hit it with that butter and that peanut butter, it starts to start setting up. And so you have to beat that in quick and get it into your, your uh, pie plate in a big hurry. And this is getting kind of close. But we don't want pudding, do we? We want it to harden into candy. And I've been making this since I was single digits with my uncle at my grandmother's house in the summer. We used to spend summers at, for a couple weeks at Cuca Lake in uh, the Finger Lakes of New York State. He lived right on the lake in a big old, big old house. There, everybody's long gone. Now it's getting down really low. See how she's sunk way, way down in there? So now we're getting very close. I'm going to test it again, as a matter of fact. Now see, it kind of made strings when it sank. I don't know if you were able to see that detail. And we'll see if it comes out in a lump, which is still ice cold and not hard enough yet. But boy, very close. Mm. Three simple ingredients, sugar and cocoa and milk so far. When you add that peanut butter, it just adds that little bit of peanut butter kick. If you don't like peanut butter, don't add peanut butter. But I got a feeling in the next couple of minutes here, we're going to be ripping this stuff. We used to make double batches too, four cups in a great big pot. It's much more difficult to get it to come out right though, so you might be better off just... What you could do is start two batches um, about 10 minutes apart so you had time to get one done and beaten it into the pan before you were ready to put the second one in. I also make homemade uh, peanut brittle which you have to get raw unsalted peanuts for that. You can go to your health food store and get it. Sometimes you can get it maybe at some of the major uh, grocery stores like Wegmans and uh, that's just corn syrup and sugar and the peanuts a uh, dash of salt and I think you put the butter in when you start. I think there's like a tablespoon of butter, maybe two. At the end, when it looks like it's done and all your peanuts get toasted you toss in a heaping teaspoon of Mm. That's done. Mm. That's just about done, guys. Stuck to my finger really good and got firm quick. One more test dump here. Oh, yeah, she's looking good now. I'm going to take, get all my stuff ready. I got my pie plate over on the counter. Alrighty, so I'm going to put the pie plate right here so you can see everything that's happening. I'm making a, a, a kit pizza for later to set this aside, letting it thaw. Okay, what you see here. tablespoon and a half or two of butter, half a cup of nuts, which is uh, optional. 
a little bit of vanilla, and a, probably a half a cup of peanut butter. So, boom, in goes the butter. Uh, dash of vanilla. Big old glob of peanut butter. I'm going to start mixing. Of course, that stuff cools it down to scraping off what I can save. I guess I'm going to use this spoon. And we're going to beat it. Here go the nuts. Oh my gosh. I think I overcooked it. She's getting hard really, really, really fast. Told you got to be quick like a bunny. So, there you go. I overcooked it. Um, but we'll save it. We're pushing her down. It's not going to be glossy on top. It sure ain't pretty. We're flattening her out though. She'll be crumbly. Yeah, we're doing alright. We're doing alright. She's getting in there. Pack the edges down good. Oh my goodness. See that? Whenever you put stuff in there, it cools that mixture quickly. So no problem with this being too juicy, huh? All right. Well, there you go. Grandma Betty's 321 fudge. And what we'll do is we'll let this cool for a little bit here in the house. I'll score it with a knife. Mm, well, that's good. And I'll show you when I'm done. Okay, it's only been a couple of minutes, but um, I'm going to score this for the pieces. I like them a little over an inch wide. Yeah, see, it's really dry, but that'll still be delicious. I overcooked it a couple of minutes. This will be so hard you can just pop a piece in your mouth and just sort of let it melt and dissolve. <laughs> oh dear. Please go away. Mm. Grandma, you never fail me. So, this is next destined to be taken to the garage where it's nice and cold. Candy jar. Well, mm. OMG, that's the real stuff right there. So anyway, Merry Christmas. Have fun with this. Bob bless. Take care. Maybe we'll make some peanut butter, peanut brittle tomorrow. Hey, Bob's back again. Hey, here we go. Um, a little bonus to the video I just made on the fudge. It's kind of short, so. Uh, I was telling you that I was waiting for my oven to warm up to 450. My grand one of my granddaughters was selling these pizza kits from Little Caesars, Little Caesars, and so I'm going to doll it up a little bit. It comes with the crust, of course, um, sauce and cheese. I actually chopped up and uh, steamed in the microwave with some water in this dish, peppers and onions. Then I threw in a can of those Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, Pre-cut mushrooms. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Then I have a little bit of my own uh, venison sausage that I made. 
to add on one half. My wife's gone totally vegan and she's trying to make, keep me good. I'm trying to be good, but it's hard for a meat lover. But I'll come back to you when we start making this up when the oven gets hot and we'll toss it in. All right, well, my oven must be just about heated up. I said these thaw on the counter in 30 minutes, but it took more like an hour and 30 minutes. And it says to bake at 7 to 9 minutes at 450. First thing that goes on is your swiss. And I'm cutting this rather than ripping it because I've never had a good luck with these things ripping like they're supposed to. Have you? The fudge is still on the back porch cooling. Try to get it all out of there. As I said, this is a kit. This is just for fun. Hey, we're approaching the holidays here. Christmas is a week away. The 26th, I think. No, no, that's the 17th today. Excuse me. All right, it's all that. And it says to spread it around with a spoon with, within three quarters of an inch of the edge. I've never made a handmade pizza before that I can recall, so. I won't say this is handmade, but you know what I mean. I haven't had to spread all the ingredients myself and all that. I hope this turns out a little bit chewy because I don't oh, I don't like really crusty. In goes all my mushrooms and peppers and onions. Previously sauteed. They're not sauteed, steamed. I like a lot of stuff on my pizza. Oh, there's the oven. Timing is everything. Okay. Range this out. I'm going to put meat on one side. And then we got the powdered cheese, the shredded cheese here. The dreaded cheese, the shredded cheese. I'm just going to dump it all in the middle and then we'll fan it out. Got a few clumps in it, but that's all right. They'll all melt right down. Oh, this looks like it's going to be awesome, dude. And dudettes. Alright, oven's at 450. The instructions say to put it right in on the shelf. My cat smells it because she's standing here looking at me. Down. My wife said don't show the stove top because I've made a mess out of it and it says to put it right on the rack. So I hope it doesn't all fall apart because this is really heavy. <laughs> I got a feeling this is going to take more than seven to nine minutes. Pizza sauce. We will be done here in a few minutes and I'll show you the results. All right. Time is up. I'm going to try to maneuver it out onto my cutting board here. Fancy schmancy rotary cutter here. Got 
Lots of cheese. I'm really much pizza cutter, what can I say? First day on the job. She sounds crispy. Alright guys. That was just for a little fun. I'm going to let this set for just a few minutes. And then we're going to eat her. Take care. God bless. We'll see you next time.